Hi everyone! If you are new, welcome! If you've watched my videos before, thank you so much for coming back! In this video, I plan to share everything that I know about the Turbo Snail. I definitely feel that the Turbo Snail is one of the very best and most efficient members of any saltwater aquarium cleanup crew. A few months ago, I was devastated by an infestation of hair algae that quickly started to overtake my tank. It was all over the rock, filter intake, and sand. I tried everything from the basics to dosing products like Vibrant, all with minimal and short-lived results. I decided to try a few turbo snails, and within hours, it was noticeably better. I can confidently say that these cute invertebrates, along with proper water chemistry, are effective and efficient at eliminating large amounts of nuisance algae from your saltwater aquarium. There are many different species of this marine gastropod. A few examples are the Mexican turbo snail and the zebra turbo snail. They are definitely worth buying and you should be able to find them in store or online for less than $5 each. Because they can be sensitive to sudden changes in water chemistry, I would suggest drip acclimating them slowly. I took around 90 minutes or so to acclimate mine. They prefer temperatures between 72 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit, specific gravity between 1.023 and 1.025, pH between 8.0 and 8.4, and DKH between 8 and 12. This mollusk has a hard shell made of calcium carbonate, so calcium levels should be kept between 350 and 450 to promote shell growth and hardness. Turbo snails are very vulnerable to copper, so they should be removed from your aquarium prior to dosing any copper-based medications. They are also very sensitive to rising nitrates, so it is very important to keep a close eye on nutrient levels and stay on top of tank maintenance. They are native to the Caribbean and the Gulf of California off the coast of Mexico, and you can find them attached to rock and in holes and crevices along the natural reef. They should be kept in a tank of at least 10 gallons to allow for enough surface area to graze and sand is the most ideal substrate. I would recommend one snail for every 10 gallons, provided you don't keep any other algae eaters. The turbo snail cannot change shells like some other invertebrates, so if you keep them with other creatures like hermit crabs or Halloween crabs, I would definitely recommend adding a variety of empty shells to your tank. This will help minimize any aggression towards your turbo snail. These snails definitely have a reputation for toppling over loose rock and coral, so it is important to check that your rockwork and corals are secure. Aside from knocking everything over, the turbo snail is reef safe and very peaceful, even to its own species and gender. It is also very common to see them hanging from each other along the glass or other fixtures in the tank. Because they move so slow, they also make a great perch for a hawkfish to rest on. I have not heard of any success with breeding these snails in the aquarium setting, but I do know that they breed by releasing eggs and sperm into the water, which fertilize and develop into snail larvae. I am not sure how to distinguish between males and females, so if you do know, please leave me a comment and I will post a video showing how to distinguish between them. The turbo snail eats using its radula, which functions like a rough tongue. Turbo snails are nocturnal and graze when the lights are dim or off. Their diet consists of various types of algae, diatoms, cyanobacteria, and seaweed. 
They will eat algae off of anything in your tank. I regularly find them cleaning the powerheads, algae magnet, and the shells of other invertebrates or each other. If algae levels are insufficient, you will need to supplement with foods like dried seaweed, spirulina, herbivore pellets, or algae pellets. If you find algae growing on your snails, like the algae growing on the edge of this snail's shell, I would recommend gently cleaning them with a small soft toothbrush. It has a foot that can be extended out of its shell. The foot has two halves that appear to move interchangeably. This foot, along with its eyes and mouth, can retract back into its shell if the snail is startled or attacked. They also have a very interesting defense known as the operculum. The operculum functions like a protective door that protects the snail from predators. It functions to close the shell's opening, protecting the snail's body. If there is something wrong with the snail, or it is not alive, the operculum will not close properly. If it has a foul odor, and the operculum is no longer closed, it is probably dead and should be immediately removed from your aquarium. They can grow anywhere from 2 to 4 inches, so I would recommend keeping them with a few smaller snails so that the smaller holes in the rock are not missed. They generally live anywhere from 5 to 10 years, depending on how old they are at the time of purchase. These snails are notorious for falling off the rockwork and landing upside down. They can usually right themselves, but they do struggle and can sometimes take quite a long time. I always flip mine over as soon as I notice this because this position leaves them very vulnerable to predators. That's pretty much everything I know about the turbo snail. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section and I will do my absolute best to answer them.